G'day everyone, Kupala here. In this video we're going to cover a very basic, quick and easy shake effect that you can add to your games. Uh, so you can use it as a type of screen shake if we attach it to the camera, or we can attach it to any object we like. So when you want to, you can just tell that object, hey, start shaking, and the object will do a little bit of a wobble kind of thing. Uh, you'll see. And uh, then it'll it'll stop doing it after a very short period of time. And it's going to be really, really easy to write this, uh, but first of all, I'll just quickly cover what I have in the scene already. I've got the player object, just a little green fella here, using him again. I like him, he's cool. Uh, and I've got some sprites in here for the background, just some grey squares uh, and a floor. And I've only added that just so it sort of shows the shake effect when you do the screen shake. Uh, if I didn't have those, it'd, it just looks like the player wobbles, so yeah, I've uh, put something in there. Doesn't matter what you have, you can do this however you like. I also have a script down here, Damage Control, I've called it, um, it's a C-sharp script. All I have in here at the moment, and it won't do anything because I don't think this script is attached to any objects at the moment, uh, but all I have is just a simple, if you click the left mouse button it fires a raycast, if the raycast hits anything at all, and the only thing with the collider at the moment is the player, so in theory if we click on the player, all it will do is log a console info message saying clicked on player. Uh, and we're going to expand on this to sort of make this is this is how we're going to do things. Basically when I click on the player is when we'll see the damage effect happen. Uh, and I'm only doing that as an example. So uh, that's why I've written this already. If you want to use this, feel free. But you'll probably have your own method for attacking or doing damage or whatever. The important thing is we'll, we'll be writing our own function to do that, and that is the function you will call whenever you want this effect to play uh, in whatever form it plays. Uh, so we'll sort of go into that a little bit. Probably the first thing we'll want though, we're going to create a script, uh, another script, also C sharp, uh, and this script is going to be attached to any objects that we want the effect to happen with. So if we want it to be a screen shake, we're going to attach this script to the camera. Um, no, it probably doesn't matter, actually. We can work around that one. We'll see. Uh, or you could attach this to any other object you want. But the important thing is this script needs to be attached to an object in order for it to, to, to for it to shake, for it to do the effect. Uh, I'll just call it, I'll call it health control, health script, health control. Yeah, something like that. In theory, if you damage a player, you'll be, you'll be interacting with their health or whatever. Uh, so I'll just call it that for now. Seems like the best option. Here it is. Um, I'm going to wipe this out. All I'm going to do for now is a public void, uh, and I'll call it, what, shake me. There we go. And that's not going to do anything. I'll just put a, I'll put a debug log in here for now. Um, oop. Try that again. Here we go. Object shaking. Something like that. That'll do. And I'm only putting that in so we can now go back to the damage control script. Um, once again, this isn't attached to anything just yet. Um, we might do that now. I'll, I'll go back into the scene. We'll add an empty game object when it lets me. There we go. Uh, I'm going to call it damage controller, something like that. Doesn't matter. And I'll drag the damage control onto that. So in theory, if we run it and click on the player, there we go, it's logging the, the message down there. We'll go out of the game, we'll check the console, clicked on player. So, yep, that's all that's happening, nothing fancy. Cool, um, go back to the damage control script. So, what do we want to do? We're going to, so we now know we've got the shake me, uh, shake me function sitting here. That's what we want to call from the control script. Uh, so, we're doing it in here already. So, now we probably want to... We're going to split this up because we're going to use the camera as well. Uh, the camera is probably going to be fairly, fairly easy to do because we can just reference that anyway. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll have the script attached to whichever object. So rather than doing a debug log, what we're going to do, um, I think I'll create a second function for this. I think it's going to be the best way to go. So under the update, I'll just <laughs> I'll quickly add in a private void um, damage this object and one of the parameters we'll give it is is a game object and that game object will be called damage object that'll do 
And whichever object we're given, all we're going to do is reference it, use get component, and the, we're going to reference, we're going to get the health control script, and we're going to run the shake me function. So that's, that function there is what we're going to call here, once we actually hit an object, whoops, try that again, here. <laughs> uh, so we'll probably use a boolean to the side as well, uh, just for the purposes of this example. So I'm just going to add two in up here. Bool uh, shake cam. So we'll set this to true if you want the screen to shake. Uh, shake player, that'll do, whoops. I suppose most of this isn't too important, however you structure the control script doesn't matter. Uh, what, what matters is how you eventually run this function, so as long as you run this, and we'll be doing the actual shaking in this script in the health control, uh, so as long as you run that function in this script somehow or another, it's, it's entirely up to you how you do this. Uh, the, most of this is just for the purposes of showing you a way it can be done, just an example, uh, but yeah, do this however you want to. Uh, so all we're going to do is do the damage this object, we're going to call that, uh, and we're going to pass it the camera, I'll just say camera.main.gameObject, that should work. So all I'm doing is passing the camera at the moment, um, and we'll use that ball actually, that would have been smarter. So if shake cam is true, then we run the damage this object function and we pass it the, the main scene camera. Uh, we'll do another one. if shake player is true instead we'll just we'll do the same thing damage this object but we'll pass it the object that we've actually hit so in this case we'll pass it ray hit dot collider uh, ray hit dot collider dot game object i think yep that's what we want so whichever object we pass it um and the reason we split this up and the reason i'm using the the camera there is because we're not clicking on the camera we're only clicking on the player so if we click on the player and shake cam is true, it doesn't matter what we've clicked on, it'll it'll shake the camera anyway. Um, but if shake player is true, it'll whichever object we've clicked on, which is only the player, is the one that we will shake. I hope that makes sense. Once again, guys, <laughs> you can do this however you want, doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that we're running the shake me function. So yep, we, we run that function. Um, and that is where we're going to do the shaking, and we'll do that. We'll do that <laughs> right now. So that's pretty much all we need for the damage control script. Uh, is it's not too fancy. All that's happening is we click on the player, and it's either going to shake the camera or it's going to shake the player themselves. And it does that by running this shake me function. So what we want to do is probably we're going to do the shaking in update, and we're going to control it using a boolean. Uh, so. I think I'll do, I'll create them first, so we'll probably say a private bool um, shaking, I think. Set it to false uh, up here. And I'll just create the update function in here. Oops. There we go. So in update, we're only going to shake the object if shaking is true. So we'll, we'll easily just add a check in here. So if shaking is true, then we're going to do the shaking, and we'll get to that in one second. Uh, but first of all, when we actually run the shake me function, what we want to happen is we're going to run a coroutine, and I'll call that, uh, what will we call it? We'll call it shake now, I guess. And we'll create that down here, shake now. Okay, so when this runs, um, what are we going to do? First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the position of the object where it is to begin with, uh, so that we can return to it once it's finished shaking. That just prevents the object from sort of drifting over or ending up in any weird spots. Uh, so we'll, we'll just create a temporary vector 3 called original pause, and we'll just set it to be transform.position. So when this runs, it's just going to grab the position of the object before it does anything else. Uh, if shaking is false, oops, if shaking equals false, we're just going to set it to true. Oops. Do it that way, that makes more sense. And we'll do a quick yield return new wait for seconds. So we're just going to wait. Um, how long? I don't know. You can probably set this via a variable as well, doesn't matter. 
So we're not waiting very long at all. Um, we're just set shaking back to false. And then we're going to set the position of the object back to its original position. So transform.position going to equal original position. So the coroutine is not doing a lot itself. It's just basically keeping the original position of the object before it shakes. Uh, it sets the shaking boolean to true, and it can only do this if it's already false, just to prevent the object from uh, getting stuck in like a constant shaking. It's only going to shake once, regardless of how many times you click. It'll it'll have a delay. Uh, so it's going to set the boolean to true. The object's going to shake itself up here, which we'll do in a moment. It's going to wait for a tiny little bit, and then it's going to set it back to false to, to stop the object from shaking. Uh, once it's finished shaking, it's then going to make sure that the object is back in its original position. Uh, like I said, to, to stop the object from ending up anywhere strange, um, you, you kind of want it to, to end up back where it was. Uh, so, for if shaking, where this is where we're actually going to do the shaking, uh, we're going to create a new vector 3, which we'll call new position. So this is going to be every, every frame that's going to be doing this, it's going to create a new position. And we're going to use random dot inside uh, inside unit sphere and we're going to times that by time dot delta time times and we'll need a variable for this so I'll, I'll create it in one second uh, shake amount we'll call it and we'll create that now um, we can set this one in the editor so serialize field private we'll make it a float shake amount We'll set that when we go back to Unity. Um, and we want to do two things as well, uh, or at least I do in this context. Uh, the game is 2D, so I don't really want the Z position or the Y position to change. I only want it to move on the X axes, just so it sort of looks like it's just vibrating left to right. I don't want it going up and down. You could probably, if you do want it to go up and down, you could definitely use this. So you could just sort of disclude whichever axis that you do want it to shake on. Um, but I'm going to set these so that it doesn't shake on the Y or the Z axis. And I'll do it by saying new y is going to equal the object's current Y position. I'm going to do the same for Z. And this is okay to do because we haven't actually moved the object yet. So it's, it's going to ensure that the Y and the Z position remain whatever value they are the moment the object starts to shake. So if, you, if you're working in 3D, you probably don't want the Y position to move, uh, but you might want the Z and the X to, to change. You know, you, you want it to sort of vibrate around a little bit. Um, but because this is 2D, I don't want the Z or the Y to change. The Z in theory doesn't exist, but when you're using the inside unit sphere and whatnot, um, it, you sort of need that Z position or it's going to end up back on zero, which is no good for your camera. Uh, it might be fine for any object on zero, but anything else it's going to have problems with. So we set the Z position back to the object's original, which should always be zero. Um, or whichever object, uh, sorry, whichever value it starts with. Uh, and then, yeah, easy. Like, once you've actually created that position, um, it's going to grab a, what is it? It's the random inside unit sphere. So as you can see, it returns a random point inside a sphere within radius 1. So uh, it's essentially just timesing, like timesing our amount by, you know, 0 point whatever uh, to give us our end result. So the higher the shake amount value, the further the object's going to shake when it does. It's still going to be randomized, so it may only shake a tiny little bit to the left or right, uh, but if you have a massive shake amount, it's got a much more, much wider range that it can actually shake between. So it will be randomized just to give it a bit of a bit of variance and look look a bit less uniform when it shakes, a bit more natural, I suppose. <laughs> um, but it's still controllable via the shake amount variable. So the smaller that value, the smaller the the uh, what's the, what would be the word the the tighter the shake will be, I guess. Uh, it won't move far to the left or right. You'll you'll see that when we actually do it. So once you've uh, set all this position, all you do is do transform.position is going to equal new pause. That's it. That should be the entire shake script. Um, so it's, it's a little bit quick and dirty, like it doesn't have any sort of smoothing or anything towards the end. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. That's a bit of homework for you to see if maybe if you think it's a bit too rough, maybe you could go on and, and try and add a bit of smoothing to it or, or a third value uh, that you can use to sort of adjust it over time, make it a bit less drastic, something like that. 
Uh, it's totally doable. Um, yeah, have a play with it and see what you think. We'll go over back into Unity really quickly and ignore those warnings. That's just Visual Studio. I'm going to add the health control to the camera and I'm going to add it to the player. And once again, the player has a collider attached to it, so that's why we can click on it. Uh, if we go to the camera, first of all, we can see the shake amount value down here. Um, I'll set it to 5 to start with. I think that should be all right. I don't quite remember what I had it set to last time. doesn't matter. Do the same for the player. And if we go to the damage controller, we can see those two balls. So I'll start with the camera. We hit play. I'll actually, I'll maximize it, sorry. And click on him. We can see we have a bit of a shake. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and like I said, that's it's only activated via a click, but it's up to you. Like if you, however you run this shake now function, uh, sorry, this one here, shake me, that's the key thing. So you would just run that on whichever object this script is attached to, and then it would, would shake the object. It doesn't really matter what it is, uh, as long as you run that function somehow. And we'll quickly just, I'll show you the player as well. Once again, this is just with a value of 5. You can see a little shake there as well. And you could sort of, you can adjust the timing of that that shake. So you could you could make it shake for a little bit longer by sort of pumping this value up uh, in the shake now coroutine. routine. will make that really drastic. Let's, let's say 2.5 instead, just for fun. If I click on the player, he's going to shake pretty crazily for 2.5 seconds. <laughs> there you go. Same with the same with the uh, camera. I won't do that just in case anyone uh, ends up feeling a bit sick from it. Might be a bit too much. But yeah, you can uh, if you drop that value down a bit, you can sort of play around, find find whatever works for you to within certain bounds, um, and that should allow you to control the timing of it. And you can use the shake amount. Uh, value variable sorry to control how drastically the object shakes and that's all there is to it that's yeah pretty straightforward like that's a screen shake for you like i said you could smooth it out a little bit see how you go bit of homework enjoy um but otherwise that's yeah that should be all there is to it guys so thanks for watching as always please like please subscribe and i'll see you next time cheers